It's 7.30 a.m. and believe it or not, we've been up for two and a half hours already. How's that even possible? Watch out, world. Plan to start work at 5 a.m., but in reality, it takes us a couple hours to get going, so. <laughs> yeah, what's the rush? It's not going anywhere. Yeah. We have a lot of work to get done today. Oh my God, it's disgusting. But we're only gonna get a very small amount of it done, I can tell you that right now, because we're coming off of what, month and a half of absolute insanity? We're trying. Today we have a couple critical things to get done. One, yeah. we covered up our water system down here. All the trenches are filled in. So we had some three quarter minus rock brought in. Yeah. Um, we thought about seeding the area with grass, but this is gonna be the driveway for our house. So at this point, we'd rather just pave it and keep the dust down. That works really well over here. There's actually no dust. So that's what Jessie's gonna do this morning. Get at it while she's cool. I know, the Get sun is coming like this. And I'm like, stop. It's gonna be probably 95 today. It will be 95 degrees so sitting on this excavator later. Is to get as much done as possible before we croak from heat exhaustion. Maybe, so Maybe we should go look at the cisterns now, make an assessment. And I'm not talking about taking the excavator up there. That's like a yep. huge commitment. Do you want to walk up there together we'll real quick? Up there on the four wheeler. Okay, we could and, do that. Uh, then we'll make a decision about how to get after this stuff. So I just realized that we actually need to get that beam tarped, and we also need to get the ends sealed. Oh yeah. I uh, forgot about that, and I think we should sticker all that wood because once I mean actually yesterday one of those boards already started to warp. Uh oh. So we need to get all that stuff stickered. Yep. We probably ought to get that pine cut there. So Let's get going. Add that to the to-do list. So what we're actually trying to figure out, we had a lot of our trench cave in over winter. Not a lot of it, but there's a lot of large rocks down there. It's kind of hard to tell on camera. And we had a lot of rocks fall around the cisterns and it's really ideal not to have rocks touching the cistern at all. So we're debating whether to crawl down there and yoink them out one by one or to take the cisterns out completely, take the rock out, might have to do some re-leveling. Um, and it took us a while to get these level, so and we, we don't obviously don't want to undo our work. On the other hand, we feel like going backwards might be quicker than going forwards. Yeah, I think so. The compaction, so when the snow thawed, the that compacts the soil so it the rocks already hard enough but the soil just gets to be impossible to move so we'd have to get in this narrow space around these cisterns and try to loosen all that rock and soil forget it not gonna happen so i think unfortunately the cisterns are coming back out which i think will actually be faster in the long run um and then we'll just set them back in once it's clean and then we've got sand already here and we've got all this clean fill dirt so that sand is going around the, the base of the cistern and then we're gonna fill just the sides of the cisterns. That way if rocks fall in, it's not a big deal. The cisterns are protected. One of the other challenges on the property is figuring out where to work to stay away from the heat. So up here, we actually have a fair bit of shade that's provided by the trees. It's not a lot, but right now we're actually in the shade. And as you saw earlier down there where the excavator is, that's gonna be brutally in the sun in about an hour. So I think we should go down and work on getting yeah, the driveway the smooth and level. Yep. Then once we get that done, we come up here and work in the shade. It's still gonna get hot, but at least we'll be working in the shade. I doubt we're gonna get to this, but so we've got three quarter threaded into the double encasing already. We had this absolute nightmare with our two inch poly. We'll share that in another video, but we're hoping to get some of that two inch poly threaded through. Where we wanna leave this system when we take the excavator back is to have the ability to finish plumbing the cisterns in. We don't wanna to have to bring the excavator back out just to get everything plumbed because we wanna test the system first. So it's on our list today to try to get some of that two inch poly into that double encasing that's hiding right there in the trench. Come on. Giddy up. Back to the bottom. On board. Oh yeah. So we had our wood miser sawmill delivered a couple of days ago and we threw a little workshop two days ago and we still haven't even thought about cleanup yet. So it looks like a bomb went off on our property. Cause it did. Yeah. It was so a very good bomb though. That's something else that we have to do today is Oh, clean up feed and wax. That's the one. We bought beeswax, like a huge chunk of it, but I think this is like easier. It's more of a commercial product, but probably yeah. yeah, easier, more ready to go. So this stuff is orange oil and beeswax. So we want to seal the end of this 
because we the sun is going to be beating on it and we want to slow the drying down and it, it was a fairly green log and it we was, really don't this has been seasoning for a year and a half yeah so with, with the bark on it me how much moisture it had in it still yeah so is there a trick to this or do i just go like well i'd probably put your glove on, on. Yeah. yeah and then rub it on that's it Jesse got the driveway level-ish, it's pretty level. Yeah. Which didn't take long, so now he's headed to the top of the hill to go pull the cisterns out, or one of them, so I should be able to stack or sticker these quickly and then come join you. Yeah, by the way, that's why you rent an excavator with a six-way blade. That's uh, a four-way yep, yep. blade, and I can't level. That's the best I can uh, do yep. with a four-way blade. It's somebody, pretty good, though. Somebody out there could probably do a better job, but six-way blade, I can get it pretty dark and smooth. Yeah. The good news is that it's relatively flat down here. It doesn't seem like there's that much cleanup that we have to do. We found the limit of our wheelbarrow. Did you see the wheel? Oh, I'm oh, you saw the wheel. Way to go, oh. wheels! Don't meet up our, to our needs. Give me a hand. You ever thought that nothing lasts on this property? Like it has to be tough to hang. Yep, we destroy pretty much everything, but that's the nature of the construction business. Yep, that's where everything costs twice as much. You destroy three of them on your way. Would you look at that? They bounce back. Right. You guys are looking for wheelbarrow tires? Apparently these can bend in half and they're fine-ish. That's broken, but it'll work for a wood cart. Apparently it can't hold a bucket of dirt. Jesse said we're out of gas, so he's gonna go ahead and put that dirt back where it belongs. And then we're gonna figure out a plan for the rest of the day. Might entail going to get more fuel 
We actually have a phone call in a few minutes, so we'll probably go ahead and take that. And it's pretty hot outside, so hopefully we can get some solid work done. We have gotten in eight hours of work so far. More than that. More than that. We started right. at 7.30. Oh, well we've been up for a lot longer. Oh yeah, eight hours of like physical labor. Yep, feels like it. Sounds about right. Well, I got the back of cistern number two kind of backfilled, sort of. I saw it, yep. Maybe sign. I think I took about six loads down there. Wow. So, backfilling that would take about a week. I don't think we need an excavator. We need an excavator and a backhoe. We need a backhoe and an excavator and a tractor and a tiller. That's it. That's all. And a road grader. Took our phone call while running to get fuel for the excavator. So, we got some diesel and we had a heart to heart in the car and decided we're going to forge on. Yeah. We've been working for nine hours. Yeah. And I think we're probably going to put in five more, to be honest. It's actually a bit cooler up here, which I think it's is It's a helpful. lot cooler, and the shade helps a ton. So what's funny is it's 90 degrees outside, but in the shade, it's totally bearable. It's workable. But as soon as you step into the sun, you're not even doing anything, and you're absolutely drained. Yeah. Yet here we are, moving our weight in rocks every three minutes, and we're yeah. fine because it's shaded. I think we're just motivated to get projects done. Yeah, which I think is we're really cool. going off adrenaline right now. So, all right, let's fill up this thirsty beast and then we'll be back at the trench. Mmm, me. Mmm, sugar. Into the trench we go. Yeah. Seems like forever ago that we laid this and bedded it in sand. I just want to say, hour nine of your day in the hot sun. It's perfectly acceptable to just find a place in the dirt to sit down because you're tired. I mean, you're already dirty, what the heck? Next, what we have to do is clean this trench. This is where the water line's gonna come out of the cistern. It's gonna go down the trench there, out that hole where it will begin the trek downhill. And we had to wait for the excavator because these rocks are quite large and we can't really just toss them out of the trench because it's too steep. So I think what Jesse's gonna do is put the bucket in the trench and I'm gonna go ahead and put the rocks in the bucket and we'll try to get them out of here. And we're hoping this will clean up no problem. later and I think we're back to where we were pre-winter if not a little forward so we got this completely cleared out and level so there's no high spot and our original plan was to not double encase the poly but since this is trying to cave in on us and you really can't go wrong with the encasement we're gonna go ahead and extend this as far as possible just to be safe this stuff is the absolute pita to work with so we have to thread the encasing on from the end. It's not too much and it's not two inch, but it ain't gonna be pretty either. Does this stuff feel more relaxed after like a 90 degree day? Nope. Never got uncoiled. Well, I should call it quits for the night. Does my face say it all? Yeah, you look pretty grumpy. So over this for today. The trench wins. Yep. Today. We had a neighbor come by to see what we were doing up here. He heard machines and he said, you're tackling it against all odds. He just yeah. took one look at this and started laughing and said, you got yourself a project. Yeah. Rocks and a, and a hill. 95 degrees. So, Hank, what's... I don't know, turn this into a positive thing. Well, I guess what's really hard for us is this is like the never-ending project and we're trying to do it right. 
we're not trying to do what a lot of people do, which is build like a 10 year system. We're trying to build like a permanent system. Yeah. And despite our best efforts, things don't get done on time. There's just, there's only so much energy in a day. And you have to remember that Alyssa and I are just two people. We're not a crew. We don't have, a, we don't have a bunch of equipment. Like we have what we have. So make the best of it. And I couldn't, Alyssa couldn't do an ounce more work today. There's no way. I mean, you've been humping since seven. Oh, I, I can, but there comes a woman like this stuff is feels impossible to pull through. Yeah. And I've shoveled like probably 5,000 pounds in rock and I'm fine. But at yeah. the end of the, at the end of the day, we're running out of daylight. It's getting close to nine o'clock. And we told ourselves that we we're going to start early so we could end early. Yeah. We but were that... hoping we would avoid the heat. And what did we do? Work through the heat. Yep. But we got a lot of work done today. It definitely feels like progress. It just, I don't know, I guess we, I wish we could finish a project for once. Like this yep. project is like a nightmare. It's been it's with going us on. over six months. Well, I mean, just working on it, we're probably at six weeks. At least. Just because everything seems to be really difficult, just nothing, nothing goes as planned. I'll just yep. say that. Like the plan, pointless. Yep. So it's always like plan B, plan C, and then some of this stuff just comes down to brute strength. Yep. At the end of the day, we could sit here and be all Egyptian about it and figure out how to build pyramids, but there just comes a point in time where pushing hard so it seems to be the answer. And 13 hours in the heat, there's nothing left to give. Yep. The end. So, trench, we'll be back another day. Maybe tomorrow. The problem isn't that we're trying to do a trench, it's that we're trying to do everything. We're trying to build a business, build a house, do our water system, have a life, sleep, eat, you know. The trench isn't the big thing, it's everything. Well, and what's hard too is this project depends on that. And expensive. that's expensive. So we try to rent it for the weekend, but when it gets to be another day, another day, you actually get four days and you get a week. But I think last fall, because we had setbacks, we actually had the excavator for two, two weeks, no, we had 10, days. 10 days. And that was almost two grand. It was 1600 bucks. And we were expecting to pay probably 500 for the weekend. Yeah. So things like that. So. <laughs> these kind of projects give you PTSD and make other projects more intimidating, but we're not going to quit. That's why people don't do this. I think this is part of why a lot of people don't build permanent because like our temporary water system took us under two hours. Yep. This, this water system, we're probably cumulatively over six weeks and we're probably pushing $10,000 and our temporary water system was about 700 bucks. And, and we would fine. still need all this if we had a well. Yeah. We'd still need it. So it's not like, oh, we're doing this instead of a well. Yeah. Um, I think Alyssa did a good job today. You killed it. Just That's the thing about to-do lists. It's just a to-do list. It doesn't yep. have a deadline. You just work on it every day as far as you can. Mosquitoes all over me. Yep. Yeah, mosquitoes are eating us alive. So let's wrap it up. Let's go rest, right. eat some dinner, drink some water. Fall asleep. Do it again tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this hoorah. We did not get to mill any lumber. Nope. We didn't put any logs on the wood miser. What else didn't we do? We have a bajillion things. More stuff. We didn't get it all done, okay? There, I said it. What the heck is this? This big old rock. First rock we found on the property. Thought we'd save it as a memoir. Just because it's such a rare sight. No, this must have fallen in. You know, I think Since... somebody brought it here. We don't have any rocks around here. Yeah, where'd this come from? <laughs> no, we're fresh out of rocks. If anybody has any rocks that you want to give us, we would really appreciate We could use a lot of rock right now.